Well, good morning, everybody. Jughead and Dakota here. Merry Christmas. Hope everyone's ready for the holidays. We haven't been airborne in about a week and a half, almost maybe two weeks. We've been busy hunting, working, you know, just doing those things around the holidays. A lot of hockey games. Go Everett Silvertips. So we, uh, we got ready to go airborne today. I wanted to go knock out a quick project that I've been thinking of doing for quite some time. And that... Uh, that we'll talk about once we land, but I found it ironic that as I was warming up the engine, checking a couple things online, and I came across a post of a gentleman that uh, had the unfortunate situation of putting his Bush airplane on its back. And uh, that ties directly into what we're going to be talking about today. So I'm looking forward to talking to him, getting a little more information from him. Romeo and maybe his uh, misfortunes might help me convince you all out there to do something to make your backcountry flying just a little bit safer. So we'll check back with you in a little bit. Rivers are pretty high right now. Sandbars are getting short. We'll see what we got to work with. See you later. Hi everyone, Jughead here. You know, one of the most common questions and, and things that people ask about on my videos is a lot of people have been asking about the helmet. And I kept telling them, hey, I'm going to get back to you, I'll do a report on it. Well, it's finally time to do it. We got uh, weather rolling in here in the Pacific Northwest. The rivers are coming up because we're getting snow and rain in the mountains. So I thought I better get out here and knock it out beforehand. Give you something to watch over your holiday break. So come along, let me explain to you uh, why I wear my helmet, or why I think you should be wearing a helmet if you're out playing in the backcountry. And then I'll go into some of the features of this bonehead helmet as well. A lot of people ask, why do you wear the helmet anyway? Do I really need one? Well, come along. Let me tell you a story, see if I can't make it a little more obvious. A lot of us that fly out in the backcountry, we do a lot of things that uh, maybe are a little more on edge than others. So I just thought I'd look back in what I do and what Dakota does and see if it doesn't make a little more sense now why I wear a helmet. You know, as I dig around in here, I've got my whitewater kayaking helmet. I would never think of floating down a whitewater river where I can be bouncing along upside down, heads exposed to the rock, without wearing my helmet. When I'm out ice skating, whether I'm playing hockey or just out skating on the lakes in Juneau or Anchorage or even in my local rink, man, that ice is hard. I'm getting old. I'm not nearly as tough and uh, resilient as I used to be. When I put the helmet on on the ice, I skate more confidently. I know I've got an extra layer of protection. And you stop and you think about all the things that could happen. It's just common sense. It's like, it's cheap, it's easy, it keeps you warm. Why wouldn't I wear it ice skating? I get on my road bike. Well, I know I haven't been on it enough, but when I'm on my road bike, I'm never gonna go ride without a helmet. Of course, riding my motorcycle, either up in the mountains chasing grouse, having fun, or riding to work, you would be asinine to be riding a motorcycle without a helmet. I mean, after all, can you imagine hitting something doing 60, 70 mile an hour? Wait a second. How fast is this airplane flying? Yeah, engine out speed, 60 mile an hour, flaring, touching down in the low 40s. I'm still moving pretty fast.
When I'm on my rollerblades, on my layovers, yeah, I got a helmet. Of course, when I was flying my F-15, we always had a helmet. Part of the reason was so I could strap this oxygen mask onto it and have my visor mounted to me all the time. But it also provided protection in a lot of other situations when you were moving hard, if you took damage, if you had to get out of the jet on injection. It's stuff you all needed. Plus, they look pretty cool. Here's one of the last areas that I finally took a transition to. I've snow skied my whole life. That was kind of one of the last places that I decided maybe I should go get a helmet. And I never really hit my head too hard. But uh, I'll tell you what, I was had a couple falls where I was awful glad I had it. One of them up at uh, Points North Heli last year with Kevin Quinn. Last run of the day, 50 feet from the helicopter. My legs were so tired, they started to spread apart, I couldn't even bring them back. Doing about 20 mile an hour and I did the most aggressive, impressive, it was on camera, head plant you've ever seen. I was actually quite glad I had that helmet on that day. What else is in here? Ah, oh, Dakota and I are always out on the mountain bike, and we've got the mountain biking helmet as well. Lots of rocks out there, much like you see out here, trees and stumps. Just all the more reason to be wearing a helmet. So when we look down here on this tail of this airplane, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven helmets out there that are for use doing fun, exciting other activities besides flying an airplane. But how many people have flipped their airplane upside down? Or how many people have put their head in the cabin of the airplane just due to turbulence? If you've got an airplane like the 170, I've got a nice headliner. All the structure is actually kind of covered with something slightly softer. But I'll tell you what, it still hits your head pretty hard. If you're flying a backcountry airplane that's tube and fabric, you've got all that exposed steel tubing in the fuselage. You go and put that airplane into the trees or you flip it over, your head is going to hit something. Go talk to my crop dusting buddies out there. They're all wearing helmets. Why? It's common sense. It's also legal in most cases. A lot of those crop dusting airplanes require you to wear a helmet. Airshow pilots, they're wearing helmets. Okay? So that's why I really think it's important for someone to be wearing something like this in the backcountry. Now, there's a wide variety of helmets out there, and I'm not saying you got to go get a bonehead helmet. I did a lot of research. There's everything from Protec style helmets like this that can be modified to carry headsets. Some pretty nice ones out there. I think Joel Dobson out diesel in uh, the Carolinas just picked one up for his Tailwheel 172. I know Steve Hendry's out there flying with a, uh, a Protec style helmet. I don't know exactly what brand. Quinter, he's got a bonehead and he loves it and uh, I know he's one of the big advocates for flying with a helmet and I really think it's important to do so. You never know when something's going to go wrong and you tip this airplane over or you lose the motor out in the mountains and you have to go stuff it between two trees out there, you're going to want all the protection you can get. I don't know how many of you out there have ever had a concussion or a traumatic brain injury, but I can tell you from first hand experience it only takes one one time a hit in your noggin and it can change your life forever. You ask my wife, you ask my kids, following my ejection where I went through basically three severe concussions in less than a second, it, uh, it changed me, okay? And I will admit that right now. I am not the same person because of, of the head injury that I received and that was while wearing a helmet. Of course, that was an extremely severe type of situation. So that's why I feel real confident being out here flying with these helmets. Now, I'm not sponsored by Bonehead. I paid full retail price for this baby. This is up at the upper end. Uh, it's a nice carbon fiber helmet. Why did I buy the Bonehead? Because I have lots of ex-military helmets that I could have converted. And I just didn't like having to try to fight trying to get everything to work on the military helmets to work in the civilian airplanes. So I decided to go with a nice Bonehead. Carbon fiber, it's light. A couple things I really, really like about it is having the visor embedded into it. 
So I'm not always looking for my sunglasses to debate and whether which ones to wear. If I need some sun protection, I drop it down. When I don't, I simply roll it back up. It slides out of the way quick and easy. It's protected when I'm not wearing it in the down position and it's always there. That was one of the big selling points for me. I like the fact that the avionics and the headphones in here are nice and adaptable. You can just pull them out, you can adjust them, you can put in different styles. They've got active noise reduction. These are just the passive ones, but I found that they are actually quite adequate for me. You vary the spacers on the back to reduce it. Nice comfortable gel pads and it's been really nice. This cord is one of the really nice things that I like. It comes off the back of the helmet here. Bonehead did some pretty good thinking about it. It's got a noise control on the very back. And what I like is when I'm in the airplane and I want to get out and go do something real quick, I don't have to reach down, unplug everything off the uh, instrument panel, and walk around with this big three, four foot com cord. I reach down over my left hand shoulder, I unplug just the short pigtail that's a nice coil type cord and it comes out and now I've got this simple cord just hanging down over my shoulder and I can easily walk around go talk to things scout out hazards on the sandbar get back in the airplane one quick plug in and we're back to flying so for me that's the reason I went with the bonehead a variety of features carbon fiber light it's at the upper end of the spectrum around eleven hundred dollars you can get stuff as low as three hundred dollars or so and a lot of stuff in between there's a lot of manufacturers starting to recognize that there's a need for this out here You know, am I going to convince everybody to go out there and spend a couple hundred dollars? No. But when you stop and think about what we spend on bush wheels, fuel, all the other things that go into running an airplane, a very simple piece of insurance for you and your family is actually quite affordable at a couple hundred bucks. All right? How many of you out there would go? Hey, if you pay me $1,000 right now, I'll guarantee you that your annual is going to go smooth for the next two years or you're going to be protected against X, Y, and Z. Well, it's not 100% positive, but I'll guarantee you if anything inadvertent happens, unplanned arrival onto any landing spot, prepared or not, you're going to wish you had it. Well, hope. Hopefully everybody came along and uh, can see some of the benefits of it. If you got questions about any of the helmets, reach out to people who are wearing them and uh, we'll be sure to, to answer back as quick as we can. This is John Jughead Council. Dakota's out running around in the, uh, in the bushes out there somewhere looking for some ducks. We've got a few flying by. We're going to take off, do a little more flying here on the uh, Sky Comish. Everybody have a wonderful Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy holidays, whatever applies. We'll see you again soon. Of course, when you're out here, don't forget, heavier out. Less than a five minute walk through here. I got a five gallon bucket, 10 pounds of garbage. It's on its way out.